What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today we're gonna to be making a cocktail called a French Pearl, and it is going to be a very familiar cocktail to you guys. It was created by Audrey Saunders for the Pegu Club in 2006, and it is just one step away from a South Side, and then oh, two steps away from a, a gin gimlet. So basically what it is, is a gimlet with the addition of mint, but then what Saunders did was uh, do a little spray of absinthe, or a few drops of absinthe in it, uh, to kind of give it that nice anise, uh, you know, uh, kind of flavor profile. And, you know, anise and lime and sugar go to well. Go to well. That doesn't make any sense. They go together very well, is what I was trying to say. Uh, so Audrey Saunders was one of the people uh, during the, like what we, I guess, term now the cocktail renaissance, who was uh, really taking up the mantle of gin at a time when people were really against gin. Uh, vodka had kind of come into the... Um, kind of modern drinking lexicon and everybody was drinking vodka and really what they were doing was just alcoholizing other flavors to just get drunk with it. Um, and gin was something that was kind of seen as, uh, you know, something that's hard to drink because of the juniper content. Although I have said on this uh, video before, I, not in this video, but I have said in my videos before that I think that uh, it's actually the angelica root inside most gin that gives it that flavor that people are very, um, that they're picking out that people are very against. The juniper, I don't think so much. The juniper does have a kind of a piney note, which can be polarizing for some, but I don't think the juniper is really what does it. It's the angelica root that I think most people don't know that they find objectionable in the gin. The juniper is just the most, it's like, you know, the juniper is something that needs to be in gin to call it gin. It has to have some juniper content in it. Uh, so I think that's the most widely known ingredient in gin. Um, but I think that, you know, what Audrey Saunders was doing at the time was sort of the Lord's work, you know, because gin is basically vodka with the addition of juniper and spices and herbs and citrus elements um, to kind of flavor it that way. And uh, because of that, when you put it in cocktails and you kind of balance those flavors out with other ingredients, you actually have a more what I like to call three-dimensionally flavored cocktails, something that just has a lot more dimension to it and a little bit, uh, you know, I think that if you did this same drink with vodka just as a test and did one with gin side by side and drank it, the vodka one would seem a bit flat. All right, that's enough proselytizing about gin. Let's get into it. First thing we're gonna do is take our beautiful mint and add just like a little, I don't know. I say a pinch of mint, but that really means like maybe six to eight leaves. All right, that's enough. Um, we are going to need a muddler. Luckily, I have one right off camera, but I did forget it. So you can just chalk that up to the things Leandro forgets. Um, we're going to add uh, three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. We're gonna add three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. And then we're gonna ounce, and then we're gonna ounce. We're not gonna ounce anything. We're gonna add two ounces of gin. Ah, I'm using East London Liquor Company gin. This is a newer gin that I've been, um, that I was uh, introduced to. I really like it. It's got like the angelica root. It's got coriander in its flavor profile. Uh, it has lemon peel. It's got that nice, you know, very um, London dry flavor to it. That like iconic London dry flavor to it. It's gonna go really well in this cocktail. I'm gonna add some ice to our big tin and then we're just gonna give this like a little press. Now here's the deal. When you're pressing mint, you just wanna press it down a little bit. It's to release the oil. You don't want it to become too, too vegetal. I say vegetal kind of a lot. It's kind of a weird word, but what I mean is you don't wanna release those like kind of dark vegetable flavors from the gin. You just wanna get that, I mean from the mint. You just wanna get that nice mint flavor. So we're gonna add it to our tin and give it a nice shake. And then as I've done a few different times on this show, we are gonna add a spritz of absinthe and we're gonna do it from an atomizer because this is gonna make it a lot more aromatic and you get an even coat here. On a recent episode, I actually was saying, oh, I don't have an atomizer. What I meant to, and then Barfly got, emailed me and they were like, wait a minute, we sent you atomizers. And I was like, oh yeah. Um, the thing is, is that I didn't think I didn't have an atomizer. I just didn't have one on hand is what I meant. Today, 
I didn't forget it and I, I have it on hand. So what we're gonna do is just kind of spray the inside of the glass so that you get that nice even coat of absinthe without too much added to the cocktail. Then we're gonna take our cocktail. I like to double strain because the mint is gonna have shredded a little bit. And I don't like to have the little mint bits. You'll get little tiny mint bits, but you don't want like mint getting in your teeth. You know, you can like, like it's shredded a bit and you'll get those little bits of mint, which make it look kind of nice because it's like kind of spotted with little bits, but you want to be able to drink that without getting in your teeth. And then what we're going to do for a garnish is just like a single mint leaf that I like to float. I like to get a really small one though. And just give it a little slap. You don't want to slap it too hard because if you do, it will tear the leaf. And then I'm just going to lay that on top like so. Let's take a sip. Now I'm very well aware of gin, lime, and simple syrup being just like a killer combination. But I gotta say the extra dimension added by the absinthe is quite killer. And I gotta tell you, I am not really an absinthe drinker. I'm not really that into the anise you know, flavor. The anise flavor recalls uh, kind of the uh, memory of black licorice and I'm not that into it. But this I am into. Because I will say that there are some flavors that you might find objectionable on their own when paired with other ingredients creates a new flavor pairing, which you might like. So I would say, even if you're not into, uh, even if you're not into, um, into absinthe and that sort of anise flavor, I don't think that you should write this cocktail off. I think that you should try it because I think you will probably like it. And it's not that much absinthe. It's just a little bit, but very nice aromatic. You can just kind of, it's just like a hint of it. And it's really beautiful. So there you have it, my friends. The French Pearl. If you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe. Check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash educatedbarfly, where we have exclusive content there. This was a quick and dirty episode. I hope you guys uh, try this. It's a very simple, awesome cocktail, very refreshing, and I will see you guys on another time.